for me, every one of our projects is a research and development project. It's every, everything that we start is something that we don't know what the outcome is going to be. We have a workshop, machines and equipment and things to try materials out with. We have uh, people who are skilled at researching processes and techniques and it's the most exciting thing to embark on but you really don't know what the outcome is going to be. We're not interested in having a, a style or, or something. For us, it, the, the task is to invent a solution that is right for the particular place. It's a scary process. There's so many unknowns. Uh, and it doesn't mean it's always all right in the end. You really have to be at your, on your toes all the time to try to make the most of uh, the possibilities that a project can, can offer. And that's what we feel our, our job is to try to do. I think one of the challenges that the studio enjoys to take on is to apply uh, interest into areas that are typically unloved. So, there are now fashions towards doing very cool bridges, but when we worked on the rolling bridge, um, there weren't many bridges that opened in a particularly interesting way. The bridge in Paddington is very, very simple. When it's operating as a bridge, it's very, very unassuming because the way in which it opens is the uh, theatrical part. The reason it's theatrical is because the bridge curls up into a ball and when it's fully opened, its two ends touch. They almost kiss together, which is a really strange thing for a bridge to do. And the nice thing about it is the bridge is completely silent and it's almost magic. This object here is a descendant of that small bridge. And in a way, this is where we'd really love to take the idea next. And the way in which it works is it's almost like four rolling bridges put together, but instead of using hydraulics, it uses a much more simple system of almost like a counterweight or a clock weight. The rolling bridge in Paddington curls into a ball, whereas this one is much more like a, a sort of snail uh, rolling on top of itself and curling up. Getting the chance to design the bus was so special for the studio because London's Transport Authority hasn't commissioned a bus design for over 50 years. It felt that there were all these challenges and opportunities where we want to get wheelchair users into buses and we want to get mothers with buggies and we know that to be reliable with the quantity of traffic on London streets we can't just have one door to a bus so that everyone just waits in a queue. We need a bus with three doors so that people can quickly load and unload it comes down to all the details. What, what are you going to press? What's the bell push to stop that bus? And what are the steps that you're going to walk up? And how's the window? And where's your elbow? And do you bash your head on the edge? So our sense was that it was going to be a collection of detail. And it wasn't going to be just about one big idea. It, we, we needed to have a philosophy that could permeate through and inform all of these details. It's thrilling to have the chance to have this exhibition at the V&A now. The studio will have been going for 18 years at the opening of the exhibition, but we feel we've only really just got started. We're only really getting going. And, um, and th that's, that has to be a very long-term uh, ambition. It feels like you have to be a long-distance runner. And we've, we've just getting the chance to to really embark on, on that. When you actually go out into the world, um, most of the places that you experience are pretty low quality um, everywhere. And so there's so much possibility everywhere to make things better. So I suppose I see the, the next 18 years for the studio, if, if, if I'm lucky enough to be uh, continuing to do this, as just trying to really take forward 
some of ideas that we've only just sort of begun to start thinking about and push and use any influence that we do have to try and make special projects happen. <laughs>